Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris and today we're going to test out this torque wrench with two common things that I hear. What happens when you repeatedly drop your torque wrench or maybe just accidentally. I'd say we dropped that a time or two. Shoot, dropped it again. And maybe if you improperly use your torque wrench to remove a very stubborn tight fastener, what happens if you over torque your torque wrench? Well, stick around, we're gonna find that out. With this clicker style type torque wrench, which is roughly anywhere from around 10 to $20, depending on what coupon you have at Harbor Freight. And if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any future ratchet torture testing that we do. Hopefully coming up real soon, we're gonna see the Hazet and the Wera Zyklops. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Bottom line, guys, before we get started, this torque wrench is not necessarily a tool, but a precision measuring instrument. If it's dropped, it needs to be checked out. Of course, it's up to you to do that, but if it's other people's safety involved, make sure you get that validated before you get it put back in your toolbox because it may not need calibration, just validation. Now let's get on with the rest of the video. So before we do any testing, we gotta guarantee that this thing is fairly accurate. So what do we have here? We have a 3 8 inch drive torque wrench from Harbor Freight. This is gonna be a five to 80 foot pound in a 3 8 inch drive. And let's take a look here at some of the manuals or certification of calibration. Here you can see that this is supposed to meet or exceed our plus or minus 4% of accuracy requirements. So let's test out our baseline, see if that is true, and then we'll go from there. So in order to validate that this is actually calibrated correctly, we're gonna pull out our Quinn Digital Torque Adapter. Now this has been calibrated and tested at a certified facility, so we'll roll the clip here so that you know that this thing is pretty darn accurate. Both of my digital torque meters tested very well within 1% variance of a certified and calibrated NIST traceable machine, and this thing was amazing. It's expensive, but I can tell you my digital torque meters are at least accurate. Now I would recommend picking up one of these because after a 20% discount coupon code, this thing is really reasonable and it's also really, really accurate. Now we're gonna put an adapter in here because this is a half inch and I'm gonna be using the Gray Pneumatic 103RA three piece drive reducing adapter set. These are actually really low profile and you can see that I've used them quite a bit. They also have magnets in there that help them stay inserted in the device and not removed with the torque wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and test out just the middle of the range here. So we're gonna crank this to 50 foot pounds and that should give us the ability, and see that's one thing I don't like about these style of torque wrenches. You start to tighten it fast and sometimes you bump that, it locks up on you. But it is what it is and for the price that you pay for this, it's really not that bad of a torque wrench. So we'll dial that in at 50 foot pounds there. So we are dialed in at 50 foot pounds. Also on some of these cheaper items, the stamping isn't quite as nice. So we'll go ahead and turn on our device here. Now I will show you one thing here. So when they do the calibration on these, if you see a ridge around the handle, that's where the torque machine is always going to be having one of the center points on that when it pivots around so the pressure will be applied like that. So we'll try to mimic that the best that we can, make sure that our hand is pushing down in that area. So again, we're set on 50 foot pounds and you can see that that broke at 51.9, 51.5. So you can see that it's pretty accurate. We'll go ahead and do it in the reverse direction here. 53.3. 52.3, so we'll do it in the reverse direction here. 52.3, 52.4, So you can see that this is relatively accurate. It's definitely within the stated 4% plus or minus margin of error. So now that we know that our torque wrench is accurate, we're gonna have to do some stuff with this to see what happens. So, you know, we might as well just start off right now. That's drop number one. You know what, why don't we give this thing a little spin? Ah, that's multiple drops, so we're liking that. Let's see how that uh, 
changes anything when it comes to looking at this. So we'll validate that we are still dialed in at 50 foot pounds. So there we are dialed right in on 50 foot pounds. And we'll go ahead and see if that changed it at all. 54.9. 55.3. So you can actually see that when we drop that, it did really have a difference on how that torque wrench operates. So let's go ahead and test it out here again in the opposite direction. 53.6, 52.3, 52.1. So you can see, you know, maybe it's just relaxing a little bit. One thing that you always want to make sure before you actually go to have your torque wrench calibrated, the technician that's working on it, they'll actually come in and they'll exercise the torque wrench. And they'll exercise it in the opposite direction. You know, you can do that a good six times. We'll go ahead and see if that changes our measurement at all. So 51.6, 51.4, 52.3, 52.1. You know, it initially had some problems. We exercised it a little bit. We'll go ahead and test it in the opposite direction here and see if we're all back on par where we should be. Fifty-two point eight, fifty-two point zero, fifty-one point nine. So maybe a little bit of user error the first time around. So we can see that after a couple minor drops like that. It really didn't phase this torque wrench at all. So if we have a look here, we can see that, you know, we're roughly a little over three feet where we dropped that torque wrench, although we did drop it on a mat. So why don't we move that to some pavement and see if that changes the results of this torque wrench. Now, honestly, there's probably different variables that could have attributed to that later on, whether, you know, we are fully in the off position all the way cranked down to no tension on the spring to maybe, you know, being all the way up there. So let's go ahead and drop this a few more times and we'll see how it operates afterwards. So again, here's about three feet. We're gonna go ahead and drop the torque wrench a couple times here. And then we'll go ahead and drop it on the bottom there. Again, that's from a three foot drop. We'll go ahead and give our torque wrench a little acrobatic lesson here. And maybe just a little bit more. All right, so that's some good drops on there. Let's go ahead, get that dialed in at 50 foot pounds. So there you can see we are dialed in at 50 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and test that torque wrench after we exercise it just ever so slightly. All right, so we got our torque wrench exercised. Let's go ahead and see if dropping it Many different sides, many different angles makes a difference. 52.4, so you can tell that it definitely clicked a little bit differently. And you might too after being dropped like that. 52.4, 52.3, 52.1. So maybe it made it more consistent. I'm not really sure what to make of that, but you can see that, you know, all in all, there's probably not a whole lot of difference going on here. It's still not too bad, still not that much out of spec, but maybe we need to go a little bit higher. What do you guys think? So here we have that torque wrench. All right. That wasn't a very good toss and give it a large toss here. Let's go see if that has any effect. You can see that we definitely marred up that head. Nicks and dings on the bottom. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give that torque wrench a third and final toss. I'd say we dropped that a time or two. Shoot, dropped it again. Oh, dropped it again. Let's go see how accurate that thing is. So here you can see a quick look at all the damage on that torque wrench. Definitely chipped the chrome. Ooh, we loosened that, which that could be a problem because that actually does affect the torque calibration on there. So we might very well be at a torque spec, but probably not because the handle didn't move or if it did, it moved ever so slightly. But that's going to be really interesting to see if that really does have an effect because that was some serious damage that this thing incurred. So go ahead and make sure that we are dialed in at 50 foot pounds. There you can see that we are dialed in at 50 foot pounds. Mechanism still works pretty good. In order to get a good calibration, you always want to exercise your torque wrench. We'll do an opposite direction as well. And one more time. So again, there for the last time, you can see that we are dialed in at 50 foot pounds. And let's go ahead and see for the very first time, after lots of tosses, drops, and a lot of damage, if there's any effect on the torque wrench. 52.2 so not too bad all in all i'd say at this precision instrument well though it may have affected the accuracy a little bit we got 51.4 51.7 and 50.5 it's still really accurate for what it is and how it came calibrated Fifty two point six, fifty two, fifty one point four. So, yeah, that thing, even after lots of drops and tosses, still pretty accurate. Now the last portion that we wanted to test out here today was going to be what happens when you over torque a torque wrench, if anything at all. They always say that that is something that you don't want to do, and we're going to find that out. So you, here you can see we are dialed in at 50 foot-pounds again. This meter here will track our progress up to about 147.5 foot-pounds. So you know what? This torque wrench is only supposed to go up to 80 foot-pounds. If we take that up to about 150, I should say that that is well more than this torque wrench should ever see and would constitute as over-torquing this torque wrench. So there you can see we hit 145 foot-pounds. So let's do that again. Hundred and 148.2. Now let's go ahead and do that in the reverse direction. All right, 146.7. So after that, you can see that we have definitely over-torqued this torque wrench. So let's go ahead and see if this affects the calibrated accuracy at all. Now I would never use your torque wrench as a breaker bar, but let's find out if it would make a difference. 52.5, So I guess all in all, you can see that we really didn't have any change Again, in the impact of taking this torque wrench to an extreme torque. 54.2, 52.8, and one more time for good measures, 53.1. So there I think you have it. Over torquing your torque wrench, well I wouldn't do it every day you can see that we really didn't have a lot of change in our results. 
Also, you can see that when we threw this thing, dropped this thing, it really didn't fall that much out of spec as well. If you have an accident every now and then, it's probably not gonna be the end of the world. I don't know guys, you tell me what you think down below in the comments. If you've ever dropped your torque wrench, if you've ever had your torque wrench calibrated, and what's your experience with using the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh Pro torque wrenches that are roughly anywhere from 10 to $20. So at the end of the day, that torque wrench survived lots of drops, lots of abuse, lots of over torquing up to 146, 47, 48 foot pounds, which is almost double what this torque wrench is supposed to be specced out at. Only goes up to 80 foot pounds. So 150, that's a lot of torque on that torque wrench. So it looks like today, both of those mitts are pretty much busted in my mind. You drop a torque wrench, you may want to get it calibrated, but as you can see the results on this specific torque wrench, it really didn't fall too far out of calibration, if any at all, compared to the baseline that we started out with. Now we're not going to the moon with this. We might just be torquing some things around the house, working on the car. I'd say it's good to go. We don't even need to touch it even after all that damage, but pleasantly surprised. Harbor Freight has a lifetime warranty on that Pittsburgh Pro torque wrench that you may not ever need to take advantage of. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it two thumbs down. And as always guys, work smarter, not harder, and we'll catch you in the next video.